Good afternoon, this is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blogspot. It's Monday, September 11th, 2006. The market's just closed, so let's go ahead and start out by taking a look at the NASDAQ 100 Trust. On Friday, uh, in my wrap-up summary, I was hoping for a little bit of a pullback before the market could rally, and that's exactly what we got today. We did have a uh, lower low made. Uh, we took out last Thursday's low, that is, this low at uh, 38.36. Today's low was 38.32, so it did make a slightly lower low. We had a pretty good little shakeout, and then a rally off that 20-day moving average. So for now, I think we can say that we've had a successful test of the rising 20-day moving average, and this bull market is doing what it's supposed to do. We had a nice return of volume today as well, so that was good to see with this volatility came volume and the buyers ended up winning out. On the 10-minute time frame, what we were looking for was a close above 39. Now, close but not quite there. Um, I was hoping that we could, you know, get it above that 39 level. 38.95 is, uh, you know, pretty good. So I think we had a, a real nice rally and could, good little consolidation here late day in the afternoon, where it didn't really give back too much of those gains. I think we will see a little bit more pullback, maybe to 38.30 before it continues higher again. But it's nice to see that it's holding above that five-day moving average again. We've got the red above the blue, above the green moving average as well. So that's telling me that now we can breathe a little bit easier after. We we had this little washout here this morning, which was, again, very nice to see. If we take a look at what happened on the one-minute time frame, uh, when we take a look at that, we see that we had the market gap lower, held above that VWAP a little bit, broke back down, came down and tested S2, and then rallied back up above the VWAP. That VWAP acted as support. We had these moving averages heading higher. And then the market made a, a real nice run for that S2 level and kind of just consolidated the gains here late in the afternoon. So very positive day for the Qs. As far as the SPY goes, what we had here wasn't quite as bullish, uh, I, I didn't think, but it still uh, was was uh, a positive day uh, for the for the spiders as well. Here we see that you know this prior level, the 130 level, is still acting acting strong, and we had you know the the more important level of support is going to continue to be down near this 129 and a half level. Um, but we did hold above 130, which is nice to see. And we need to see the market. Really, what I was looking for there was 130.60 for the buyers to retake that uh, before we could say that they really had control. And that's about this level uh, well, right here. I'll draw it in. So that's 130.61. And you can see that's where we had the declining five-day moving average as well. So the spiders aren't quite as bullish here as the NASDAQ 100, but it's shaping up very nicely. For now, in the uh, spiders, the SPY, I think that we're going to keep an eye on 130 level. And then obviously, if 129.5 is taken out on the downside, then there's going to be bigger problems for this market. But I thought today was a very constructive day. The semiconductors, let's take a look there. They had a nice day as well. And this, you know, this market's setting up uh, quite positively. We've got these higher lows. Now, what we need to see is the, the trend continue and it, the market goes up and takes uh, takes out these prior highs and makes a higher high. And we can hopefully look for a test near that 200-day moving average. Now, what happens when we get to the 200-day moving average is anyone's guess. Um, but there could, you know, there is the potential for some more significant uh, resistance up there based on the weekly time frame. But let's keep our analysis shorter term for now. Um, because, again, the buyers took control here. They took control above that 33.5 level. That's where uh, I was looking for the buyers to, to uh, take control. We got that. That's holding. This market, you know, the semis often lead the rest of the market. So very positive action in there. Let's see if it can continue to hold that 33.50 or on a closing basis over the next few days. And if so, then we could be setting up for a, a good session uh uh, for the rest of the week. The IWM, Russell 2000, wasn't quite as strong. And this is, you know, still the area that gives me the most concern. We'll look at those MDYs here in a moment, too. But the IWM, let's take a look at the daily time frame. We've, we've been looking at this trend line, and that continues to hold, so that's a positive. The negative aspect of it is that this uptrend line, is, you know, it's closing below that. Now, an uptrend line doesn't invalidate the trend. Here, I think that if we take out today's lows 
you know, any time this week down near 69 and a half, then there's going to be troubles for the for the IWM. But right now it's holding above that 20-day moving average. And looking at uh, at this, what we were looking for there was a close above 71. And I still think that's going to be the case. That's where we have that declining five-day moving average. So it's going to take a close above one seven. I'm sorry, 71 before I start to get a little bit more bullish in here. We do have what's looking like here's our first higher high and hopefully this can hold as a higher low, that'll really start to build the bullish uh, scenario. Let's take a look at that MDY, because this is the one I was concerned about over the weekend, saying that if we got below and closed below 134, that that could represent some good trouble, some, some potential trouble for the market. Now, the, the MDY came down below that 134, and that should have given you reason for concern, but we did have buyers come in quickly and squeeze the short. So now hopefully what we're doing is getting a big short position built in here that'll be fuel for the upside fire. It's still too early to say it's safe, you know, for this market in particular, these these mid caps, but the way that the NASDAQ 100 and the, uh, and the semis in particular are acting leads me to become a little bit more bullish. And what we looked at uh, on Friday was how the market was at its three day VWAP and how it was holding above that. If we take a look at the Qs and we took a look at a four-day chart now, you can see that the, uh, the, uh, the, the market is comfortably above the average price for the last four days in here. So that's a positive. We had the same thing happen in the semiconductors. So since this sell-off has begun, the buyers have definitely regained control there. Let's take a look at the MDY. And the MDY, the jury's still out. It's kind of going back and forth between there. And, and when we look at the spider, what we can see in here is the four-day VWAP. It's still kind of battling that level as well. But if we can continue to see leadership from the Qs and the semiconductors, I think this market can turn around and uh, begin rallying once again with some, uh, with some vigor. Uh, UTSI was an open position. I had suggested uh, buying it above $8.40 on Friday. Put a stop pretty tight at um, $8.28, so that got stopped out with a loss of about $0.13 cents on UTSI. Lennar, we were short from Friday after this funny uh, movement in here where it rallied up past $43.60. Shorted below 43.50. I suggested a little closer, lowering your stop to 43. So you should have been stopped out of that with a gain of about 50 cents. Um, Google continues to show why, you know, I call this the bulletproof stock. This stock, if, if this stock breaks, I think it's going to take the market with it. I think it just continues to frustrate the heck out of the short sellers in here. But it was a good day for Google, and I think Google avoided... Uh, what looked like an almost certain death right here. So that also gives me a little bit of reason to, to think that we can breathe easier, at least for a little while. I still think, you know, we've got a declining 50-day moving average, and we've got a declining 200-day moving average in Google as well. So I still think there's reason to be concerned about that. We'll have to keep an eye on it. Um, stocks I had mentioned in yesterday's video were BB, B-E-B-E -B -E is the symbol, and the suggestion there was to buy that above $21.45. And what we had happen in here, where are my intraday charts? Okay, here's a two-minute chart. Let's take a look at that. 21.45, the stock got above that. We were then going to put our stop at 21.18. Clearly, that was not vi violated. So what we have to do now is raise our stop. And I think that our stop probably can go right about break even. Let's say 22.45 for a stop in BB. Next, we had Chaparral, Steel, CHAP, and all the commodity stocks are getting hit hard. So um, I, I don't think that this is probably a good one going forward either. But it looks like a failed breakout here. And from failed moves come fast moves. We had low volume in the consolidation, then a big volume reversal in this stock today. I think there could be trouble uh, brewing in here. But the way that I had suggested playing that was a buy on strength above recent resistance at 38.25. So we dodged a bullet by it not getting above there. There was no reason to be involved in this stock. And it actually dropped about $3 uh, lower today. So no reason to take that loss. Um, that's why you don't want to be early to these stocks. You want to buy them as the momentum builds. Uh, ENZN was a stock that we wanted to purchase on strength above $8.20. We saw that occur early on right, uh, right in here. So 
Stop stock should have been bought at eight dollars and twenty one cents. The stop I had suggested was eight fourteen. Let's go ahead and raise our stop to break even on ENZN. Okay, we also had two short sale candidates. So Celgene we were looking at once again. And Celgene didn't meet our entry parameters. What we were looking for was a rally up to 41.45. Instead, it gapped lower, so there was no reason to get involved. And then we were going to sell it short below 41.30. Now, if you took it in the afternoon here, we had this gap and our, all this action. You should probably get out of this trade break even. This stock is a wild stock, and what I'd suggested that, you know, it, it, it was a, a target of 39.50. Now, I'm not taking credit for the trade, but I just want to point out how volatile this stock is. It ran down to that 39.50 level, which is the r rising 200-day moving average. So it leads me to believe that for now, uh, that we've had our fun with Celgene on the short side, uh, hit it three times in a row. If you know, if you traded it, you know there were there was opportunity there three times in a row. Um, I didn't trade the stock because of the gap lower, but. It looks like it's time to move to the sidelines and let uh, Celgene settle down a little bit in here. I still think that the you know the longer term time frame we've got a rising 200-day moving average. You know, best case scenario for this stock is that it you know it's trading in a range maybe 40 to 45. I don't know. I don't have any particular interest in that stock, so I'll discontinue updating it. Uh, CHRW. This is uh, C H Robinson. And what we're looking for here was for the stock to rally up to forty-six dollars. I'm sorry, forty-three dollars and sixty cents. You can see here that it gapped down. So again, no play in here. When they gapped down initially, when we're looking for that initial strength up to forty-three sixty, then we're going to sell it on a breakdown. Once they, you know, gap lower to begin with, and then they come back up, it's showing that the short, you know, that the sellers got trapped, very similar to Celgene. So you don't want to take it, even if it gives you another entry the way Celgene did. That's going to wrap it up for today. If you're seeing this blog anywhere, uh, this video rather, anywhere other than on my blog, be sure to go ahead and take a look at Alpha Trends. And also for you YouTube users who view it over there, don't forget to rate my uh, video so I can climb up in the ratings over there. I'd appreciate that. Thanks for your time, and I'll be back this evening with another video.